Hi, it's Mike Mikowski again, and we're going to do another model build. Uh, this is going to be a little bit more of a straightforward kit build. Nothing special, nothing modified. It's going to be a rocket. Decided to uh, give this a shot. The uh, that lovely glare. How about that? Can I fix that? There you go. The uh, Horizon Mercury Atlas. And uh, it looks like a nice kit it's from Australia. It's been out a few years. Oh, I got one to build it. Um, it it's got four uh, sprues. Call it the sprues. Started cutting out some of the pieces. Start with the main rocket body, of course. So it's got two what look to be identical sprue sections because they're numbered the same. Uh, it's got a nice part with the base and nicely molded, nice engraved detail and a little instruction sheet. Nice looking set of decals, including the little wrap arounds for the uh, tubing. And uh, we'll just go through and build this thing. So this might be pretty short, we'll see. Uh, the first thing I notice is that, um, let's get the light back down here. Uh, it has you cut the uh, halves out and drill out some of the uh, holes in the middle here to attach uh, some of the external plumbing. And so I drill it out with my handy little twist drill and I noticed that, you know, it's starting to protrude on the outside. So one of the things I get a little, a little miniature file here and just give that a little touch with that. And they do suggest you um, do the painting before you put these on. And I could see that would make a lot of sense because uh, a little sanding pad here, knock that down. Cause uh, it's gonna be hard to put the decals on with all that plumbing. So little things like that. There's some holes you gotta drill in here, a couple places. So we'll touch them up on the outside. And um, obviously we have to clean this up after assembly, but um, that goes together like that. So um, it looks like, let's do a dry fit here. Already cleaned up the, the nubs. So it looks like these two go together. See, I'm trying to get these pins in here, and it's not working. So after some experimentation, I determined that the hole here and this pin don't really match up. So you just put it on offset here to see if it fits. And you can see it doesn't really go in there very well. Not at all. So I drilled this one out a little bit. I found the right size drill, and you can see much better fit. Whereas here, without drilling it out, that's why I didn't want to go in. It's just the holes are a little too small or the pins are a little big. So I'm going to drill these out just a little bit more and we'll try that again. So we've got all the parts cut out here and trimmed the holes to fit. So now this goes together much easier. And we'll go ahead and do that to do a nice dry fit test with the main rocket body parts. And get these. There we go. And I'll hold it together. It's always a good idea. There's an old joke about taping your models together, but it, it's a good technique just to dry fit things. And then let's see, the um, this part doesn't seem to have any preference front back symmetric. So that slips on the bottom here. There's a little bit of warpage in some of the, in, in the, the, the ends of this thing. I noticed it's a little tricky. There we go. But it looks, it's a very good fit. These are great joints. You're not going to see that. And there's two pieces on the bottom you put together. There is a front and a back. It would appear that where I put the two holes here, aligns with these holes here. And that will, again, very nice joint. You know, I don't have these taped together. But you get the idea how this will uh, fit. And the parts fit appears to be... Uh, uh, very good and as we all know glue generally helps this situation greatly but yeah it'll look uh, pretty nice put together so I think uh, good first impressions okay this assembly is all glued together and I've started cleaning up the seam because uh, it's a long seam you know it's 10 inches um, what does this say from here to here yeah it's all nine inches um, it's pretty good fit, but there's, I don't know, I'll say warped, but um, 
So I started sanding it and I'm gonna have to clean this up a bit. Some of this gets covered up with pieces and plumbing, but a lot of it doesn't. Um, so it's, it's not too bad. I like to put a little extra glue on there and it kind of fuses in after sanding. Kind of it takes some of that sanding dust and it actually uh, cleans up the seam instead of putty. So, uh, but some of them are enough of a mismatch. I'm gonna put a little putty on there. I like the perfect plastic putty and the Vallejo plastic putty. But you know, if you're sanding and then you clean it with anything wet, the putty comes right off because it's water-based. So I'm gonna go with um, a little better uh, auto-type putty and uh, uh, clean these seams up, put a little Mr. Surfacer on it for some of them and see if I can uh, get this cleaned up and then we'll move on. Maybe we'll move on to the, some of the small stuff too. So I put some um, Mr. Surf Surfacer on the joints here after an initial uh, sanding and cleanup. And I actually put some uh, was liquid, Mr. Liquid Dissolve Putty, Mr. Dissolve Putty. This is pretty good stuff. It's like super thick um, Mr. Surfacer. I couldn't get the thick stuff, but I've got an old bottle, so it's thick now. Anyway, that helped a little bit on big pieces, big chunks that were missing, not missing, but gaps or misaligned parts. And there's still some uh, fine misalignments, so a thick coat of uh, Mr. Surfacer will take care of that. And then I realized I was starting to look at photos of the real thing. I should not have glued on this bottom assembly because it's a different color. This is like a pale white aluminum, and the rest of it's going to be sort of a glossy um, stainless steel. So that means I'm going to have to mask this. But on the other hand, these side fairings are also the flat aluminum. At least that's how I'm going to paint it. But there's a joint there, so... Be doing a lot of painting things separate from uh, the final assembly. So this will be one of these models where you um, paint first and then put the pieces together, at least for, to some extent. All right, I've got a little more cleaned up and sanded down. And I think what I'm going to do is uh, give it a quick coat of primer and then figure out how to paint this. Uh, since this is going to get sort of a chrome finish and this is going to get sort of a flat aluminum uh, probably have more luck painting this first, masking it, and then painting the, uh, the shiny finish. I've got primer on the uh, rocket assembly. Pretty pleased with the uh, joint. So I got cleaned up, put on some of the uh, tubing. Had to patch that joint with a little, little putty. And um, got these parts on. And uh, got enough primer on the whole thing for acrylic to fit. And I'm gonna do is paint the bottom section here and some of these fairings with flat aluminum. I'm gonna use um, model air, I like that. And then the rest of it, I'll let that dry overnight. And then the rest of it will hit with um, some uh, Rust-Oleum glossy metallic that I used on an aircraft that I was real happy with the finish. And we're gonna try that. So uh, let's get going with some painting. technique with the uh, gloss black. I had a spray can of, well, it said semi-gloss. And it looks like I got some semi, and I got some gloss, but it's not uniform. So I uh, took some 3200 grit sanding pads and uh, rubbed it down some. The, the surface seems really smooth, but somehow I, maybe the paint wasn't mixed thoroughly. I shook it a lot. But you can see it's not a uniform glossy. I want, I want a nice dark glossy black. So I'm going to actually let this cure for a few days and uh, get back to it. And so I think I'm just going to get it, I'll hit it with a, a coat of future and try to see if I can get the dark shade, the aluminum color should 
cover opaquely all of the different tones, but I want to get a uniform glossiness. So I think going with acrylics like Future would be my best bet. So I'm going to let this cure for a few days and work on something else for a while, and we'll get back to this. Meanwhile, uh, there's some parts, the, the rocket nozzles need a little, a little cleanup and a little putty, and this uh, exhaust tube was uh, kind of had some sink marks in it, so I had to fill that in. So we'll get that all cleaned up and get, get to it soon. So while that spray can is curing on the booster, I just had to go ahead and build the uh, mercury. I'm actually going to build the um, capsule on the rocket as the uh, Big Joe development test, which is kind of cool because it's all one piece. It's got an interesting paint job. So that's going to happen. But I thought I'd go ahead and build the capsule that comes with the kit because I think it's from a separate kit that has its own stand. So I started working on that. It's got lots of little pieces of uh, tower parts, very petite, but nicely molded, very petite little um, tower parts. This is the core of the capsule. You wrap the pieces around it. The um, escape rocket needs a little cleanup, it looks like. Tiny little, if I can get them out of here, rocket nozzles. So I'm going to be working on that. These little parts are coming together for the tower. You see, it's a little finicky. You gotta, there's three assemblies you gotta glue them together. And I flattened out some of the attach points. But I think it'll be okay. As you can see, we've got some paint on the rocket body um, after letting the uh, future gloss cure up a couple days. I uh, hit it with a couple, two, three medium to light coats of Mission Models Chrome. And it seemed to come out okay. You know, it's not perfectly mirror-like, but it's um, nice and shiny, it looks good. And I think this will work out. So I'm gonna let this cure up for a few days before I attach decals and stuff. So that's coming along pretty good. Uh, like I said, I decided to um, actually work on the uh, mercury kit that came with it because I'm going to um, paint the boilerplate to put on the, uh, the missile launcher. And so you got all this other parts for a full of mercury so I'll do it as, as Glenn's capsule. This comes together pretty cleanly. Uh, the uh, tower, kind of funky. I think it'll be okay. The escape rocket, <laughs> for such a small piece, actually had a seam issue, but I think I got it cleaned up. I'll give it some more primer to double check. You can see there's a little piece of uh, uh, photo etch and that's for this adapter stage. Part of it, there's a vent here and a vent cover with photo etch. That's kind of cool. Um, I got the engines cleaned up, painted a mix of gray and uh, metallic steel. Uh, maybe I'll give it a little bit of a flat coat. I think that's a little too glossy for, for my taste. Um, what else? I'm gonna put the thing on a base. I forgot to drill out the bottom, but it looks like it'll fit on something like that. So um, I'll have kind of a, a bonus kit here with an extra mercury capsule. So let's come along. So I've now started to paint the um, boilerplate capsule, started by masking the top half, doing kind of a metallic black on the bottom section. Then I'll let that dry, mask it, and work on the top. Well, I started the decals, and you can see I got the big ones on because you need to kind of do these in order because of the plumbing that goes over the top of this. But uh, this is right on the paint, no additional gloss. And uh, the decals are very good. You can hardly see the film. I'll probably give it a clear overcoat when I'm all done. So um, I think it's off to a good start. And there's lots of little decals. Decaling is progressing. Here's one of the side pods. I decided it's got a whole sheet of decals. It fits on the entire thing, as you can see plus a couple little on each end. And actually, if you go on in layers, they do recommend you cut it in half, which I did. You can kind of see the left side. I just put it on a few minutes ago. The right side is almost set up, so it does dry clearer and smoother. But the um, 
Lots of little decals all over this model. You can see there's tons of little stenciling, some no steps, some, what does it say? Uh, external disconnect or something. But uh, a lot of, a lot of stenciling provided. You know, in actual photos, I can't even verify that these dark things are on this rocket because there's no good photos of that area. But um, a few more to go. But um, it really adds a lot to it when you get these uh, this level of stenciling and stuff on here. And the, uh, the main markings are good. And they got wraparound for the piping as well. And you use enough fluid and you can get these things to wrap around even this, these, these uh, fuel lines that go on the outside, they get attached, they get attached here eventually. But, um, you know, this uh, Microsoft will, uh, right off of that and some coaxing, will uh, get those things to conform. All the decals are done on the rocket. There's quite a few. Uh, you can see some here again, show them in the last little snippet. Uh, and I've put on the basic fairings and plumbing so the, the main assembly and painting and finishing is all done. I gave it a little bit of a, a wipe down, getting any dust off and getting the decal solution uh, mopped up. Uh, I didn't use much because it messes up the paint sometimes. And so um, I'm going to let this dry a little bit more and then I'm going to give it a, a decal sealer and um, be ready for, for that. <clears throat> Meanwhile, there's the um, adapter painted black. The uh, Big Joe capsule started painting that. Um, various shades. There's white and different couple shades of uh, metallic colors. Some masking going on here. Got to do a few more layers of that. <clears throat> Meanwhile, I'm working on the uh, Mercury capsule, which is a, sort of a second kit. Comes with it. Um, here's the main capsule got to bring that band up there white so that i'll mask that and hit everything here with black actually i'm gonna do the heat shield first that'll be a sort of a brown color i got this nice uh, german black brown i think i've used this before i'm not sure but that's a good replicator for that uh, heat shield color uh, a few more miscellaneous pieces for the capsule the um, capsule, I got the uh, tower assembled. It came out okay. Uh, not not perfect, maybe. Alignment's a little goofy, but uh, it'll work. Uh, I think the base ring is black. And then I'll put on the uh, nozzles because there's a little motor nozzle there, silver underneath. And then I'll put these guys on. <clears throat> so little by little, it's coming along. Well, the um, masking on the um, boilerplate capsule uh, didn't quite go as well as I hoped. As you can see, there's a lot of uh, places where the masking tape just pulled up, pulled up the paint along the top here. And that was over a base coat of Tamaya um, rattle can white primer, and that's the white. And I airbrushed on a mix of some Vallejo metal colors, but um, didn't adhere very well. So anyway, I'm going to have to touch this up by hand, and um, we'll get, uh, get to that and get this thing fixed up. So here's the um, capsule. It's going to be um, Glenn's capsule, number six. Matt just put some tape on that uh, brownish uh, heat shield and airbrush it with my standard black-gray uh, from Vallejo. I cleaned up the uh, boilerplate, uh, had to touch up the paint. It looks clean-ish. It's not perfect. There's some gooey stuff towards the top there, but I think the overall pattern's pretty good. The problem is there's no really good pre-flight color photos of what this thing really looked like uh, in terms of how white was that white and how shiny was the uh, metallic colors, but it's it's close enough. I'm going to give it a, a light coat of uh, future so I can put some decals on it. I added some weights, some fishing weights, to the bottom bulkhead where the rocket engine nozzles go, and I'm securing it with Aileen's um, tacky glue. It's really great for uh, 
kind of fast drying, thick application of stuff like this. And this is what I use for, uh, for weights. And that'll hold that in there and that'll give this um, model a little more lower center of gravity so it um, less likely to tip when it's sitting on the display. Well, we're getting down to the end of the road here. Um, on the rocket, I got the bottom put on. This base um, bulkhead didn't fit very well. It was like too big. I had a shave around both curves and a little bit in these corners, but you're not gonna see it much anyway. So, um, but I got this on. This brace here did not fit very well either. Let's see, you can see that. Um, it, it just butts up against this and supposed to fit into two holes here. But um, there are supposed to be little angle pieces, which actually I think you get a duplicate of that part. Somewhere back here is a duplicate of that. Here it is. And um, it has no such, that's just a straight, straight pin on there. So um, that was kind of messy, uh, but it's on, it'll be, it'll be fine. A um, couple little tiny parts. These vernier thrusters are going to be like the last piece I put on because they're so tiny. Um, as is this little, um, I don't know, it's an APU exhaust or something that goes on the side as well. So I'm just saving that for the very end. Um, the two capsules are all painted and decal, as you can see here. That came out pretty nice. Got a flat coat on both of them. Oh, that came out good. I put a little silver band on the bottom because some light colored band shows up bottom of the boilerplate that's not at the uh, Mormon clamp. So I don't know. Photos aren't very good. The, um, uh, hey, it's John Glenn's day. Yesterday? Today? Um, uh, his capsule for the separate display are just about finished. Got all the decals on. It's a very nice kit. Very sweet level of detail for something this small. I'm uh, very happy with that as is the uh, escape tower. It's wrapped up the, uh, you can see this finicky little um, photo etch wiring for the bottom, which was uh, a lot of fun to put on. <clears throat> Not really. Uh, what else we got? We got the uh, stand, been painted, black coated. This little, this is kind of neat. This little go on here. That look nice. It's probably not, yeah, I need a little glue there. Um, the other stand, I had to kind of shave this a little bit to get it to fit that rocket. Uh, that's coming along. A couple more parts for the um, um, MA6. A couple of nozzles for the um, um, escape tower. And you can see they even have all the stripe decals for the um, retro rocket pods. Uh, they're not perfect, but they're close enough to look nice. So, um, Getting to, I think, all the painting and decaling is pretty much done. Oh, there is the strap also for the uh, bottom of the retro pack. And you have this photo which That should go on without recording any painting or anything. We'll see how well that fits. Anyway, um, coming down to the final stretch here. And uh, we'll get all this put on and um, uh, see what it looks like. Got these uh, little straps on the bottom. They're photo etch parts on this kit. Um, they were kind of a pain. <laughs> I, you know, I pre-bent them, but I couldn't get the angles <clears throat> to stay down to tack onto the sides here. I used CA, and first thing is, turns out you have to orient the uh, retro pack in the right place to have the straps come down to the right positions on the capsule. And the instructions didn't give you any of that information. So I had already glued down the retro pack in sort of a random uh, orientation before I realized, oops, that needs to be a certain orientation so these straps are attached in the right places. That didn't happen. And they're just kind of sitting there glued on. I, I'm going to have to touch up the paint or a little flat coat to make that look a little nicer. But, you know, it'll do. It's going to sit kind of nose up so you're not going to see it too much. And it's the typical approach a better finish than perfect. So we're going to go with what we got. Well, there it is. It's all wrapped up. Just the last few steps. We're just putting all the little pieces together and touching up some paint. Those little pieces included the little vernier rockets here on the bottom. Uh, this little exhaust port um, and gluing the capsule on. Um, it looks, I'm happy with it. It's, it's a nice kit. I mean, I'm 
really impressed with the level of detail in this kit. <clears throat> All the little finicky detail at the bottom, the engines. Uh, parts fit is generally okay. Uh, it's always a pain getting this kind of a stainless steel metallic finish. But, you know, 70 second scale looks pretty good. You know, the, my finished job isn't perfect, but it looked nice on the shelf, as I typically say. And, of course, you get the bonus of um, a whole full capsule. Um, this is what comes, you can buy this as a separate kit. I think there's two of these. It's got the boilerplate as well. And so you have enough to um, uh, do a, a whole capsule. And, you know, I uh, finished the assembly here and had a touch of paint in a few places. But overall, um, it's a cute little setup. Very nice de detail for this scale. And, um, the, again, the fit of the um, photo etch retro strap was a little funky. You can see I kind of touched the paint up a little bit there and uh, makes it look a little less crappy. So anyway, um, there it is. 72nd scale kit from Horizon. Um, highly recommended kit. Uh, I, I uh, had put off building this for a while because I don't do a lot of rockets, but uh, I thought, well, I could pop this out without a lot of trouble. It was a little more trouble, perhaps, than I anticipated, but uh, certainly it'll look good on the shelf. So, again, thanks for watching, and um, stay tuned for additional episodes of Space and Miniature Videos. Thanks very much.